Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you and Senator Graham for holding this very important hearing. We appreciate you, Mr. Nathan, for being here and all that you're doing. You've got a, a big job. I know in your testimony you mentioned that the DFC has surged its efforts in the food and agricultural sector. Uh, food security is national security for all of our countries. And that you continue to actively look for more viable projects to support. Can you tell us what types of projects has the DFC supported in improving food security in developing countries? Uh, thank you for the question, Senator. Um, particularly after Russia's illegal and brutal war on Ukraine, the issue of food security globally has become even more critical and highlighted. Uh, it's been one of the reasons why uh, we've surged our effort, had a special focus on it. Um, our projects uh, are often small in this area because they're targeted at smallholder farm farmers, at rural communities, at finding ways to bring products to market more quickly, uh, eliminating layers of middlemen, We've invested in companies that provide technology and financing to smallholder farmers. We've uh, made investments with banks that then target their uh, lending activity toward uh, farming and agricultural businesses. Uh, I visited when I was in Georgia, in the Republic of Georgia, uh, I visited cold chain supply, uh, cold chain logistics uh, companies that help, that we've invested in, that help uh, products produce uh, not spoil and get to market more quickly. Uh, I think there are a range of things we can do in aquaculture, uh, in Asia, uh, and uh, in other activities focused on really bringing uh, the farmer more directly to market. Very good. Uh, no, that's, that's so important. Uh, you know, things little things that are huge things, uh, getting countries, the regions, the, just the world food price, you know, as opposed to, you know, not having uh, the competition, uh, you know, is so important. If, if I could add, um, even something like our investment in Yilport in Porto Bolivar in Ecuador, a Pacific deep water container port, that has a food security element to it because that helps Ecuador be more efficient in exporting bananas and their, you know, their primary agricultural commodity to the rest of the world. So infrastructure is a critical component to also helping to promote food security. Right, very good. Um, speaking of infrastructure, uh, I know that DFC is focusing on working with the private sector to promote infrastructure investment in an effort to offer a good alternative to Chinese predatory lending. Uh, can you elaborate on the specific actions the DFC has done to reduce Chinese predatory lending in developing countries and what it intends to do moving forward? Well, Senator, we need to show up and offer a choice. That's the best way uh, to compete. If we have uh, a flow of deals, if we have the financing tools available to us, if we have uh, the workforce and capacity uh, to process those deals quickly and to generate uh, more deal flow and deal with clients, that's how we're gonna be able to um, properly compete with China. I can think of some recent examples of investments that we've made that are uh, helpful in that. Our board approved earlier this year uh, our financial support for the expansion of an airport in Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone's one of the poorest countries in the world. Anything we can do to help connect them to their region, to the world, to help their economy. We're also um, financing the building of a power plant in Sierra Leone. This is a country with an extremely low level of electricity penetration. That's a key to, de to development. At the moment, the capital city, Freetown, uh, is dependent on diesel generators on a barge that are owned by a Turkish businessman. Uh, it's unreliable, it's inefficient, uh, it's unhealthy. Um, by uh, financing the construction of a power plant, we're helping them have greater energy security uh, and promote development. In the, uh, in the 24 budget, the State Department has a lot of money for infrastructure, ports, things like you're describing. Uh, do you all work together? 
You know, we work very closely with our interagency partners. Uh, the Secretary of State is the chair of our board. Uh, we rely on posts around the world to help us with uh, sourcing deals, with the vetting of our partners, with our know your customer uh, rules. The State Department helps us um, with thinking about certification for the strategic importance uh, of our deals. Um, and like with all of our interagency partners, USAID, um, the Treasury Department, Commerce, uh, we work closely to help get our projects through uh, the process more quickly and to generate as many good ideas as we can for potential future transactions. Um, and as far as critical, critical entities like uh, biotechnology, do you, do you, um, are you emphasizing things like that or how so, does that work? Uh, one, one of our priority areas is healthcare. Uh, helping uh, developing countries build more resilient health systems is an important element of that. That can include therapeutic clinics, but it could also uh, be involved in the manufacturing of vaccines or pharmaceuticals, the distribution of medicines to rural and underserved communities. Those are the kind of opportunities that we're looking at. Very good. Well, thank you. We appreciate you and your staff's hard work. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.